A package has arrived. And what a package it is. I think I know what's inside this. So let's do an unboxing. Let's see what lurks inside. Okay, lots of packing stuff. Let's just get that out of the way. Ah, yes, here we are. Let's see what we've got here. Eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. A water cooler. I better just make sure that the camera can see what I'm actually seeing. So flip the screen around. Some SATA cables. A SATA optical drive. Gigabyte motherboard. Oh, this is rather heavy. Power supply. And the PS de resistance. Yeah, so here we are. I now have all the parts to build my ultimate dream PC. These two are out the other two computers. I've got the SATA drive out of my video editing, editing computer. My graphic card out of my main computer. So, next part is, got to rip everything else out of this. Just look at the amount of crud that's accumulated in there. I had no idea it had gotten that bad. We have a dead moth. Various bits and pieces. A capacitor. I don't know how that got in there. And, uh... Well, one of my cartoon drawings. I really don't know how that got in there. And like they say on the EV blog, don't turn it on, take it apart. Except this ain't that. Let's see, what shall we remove first? I think we'll take this old power supply out. So we're not going to be needing this. Should really unplug it first, shouldn't I? And maybe cable management would have been a good idea as well. Never mind. I'm not going to touch those heat sinks though, because this has been on today. And although those won't be hot anymore, there could still be high voltage on them. I found that out the hard way. I accidentally touched the heat sink. Well, didn't accidentally touch the heat sink. I did touch the heat sink on purpose to see how hot it was and got a nasty shock off it. Turns out that's hot with electricity. And I measured it on the meter, and it was 170 volts, believe it or not. Oh, still another screw horn in here. I just noticed that you cannot really see what I'm doing with the screwdriver on the camera. But never mind. It should just come out now. Oh, I just did touch one of the heat sinks, but fortunately there wasn't any voltage on it. Alright, let's just unclip that, which I forgot. Anything else still plugged in? No? Alright. I think next we'll take the floppy out. I don't mean the floppy. I mean the CD-ROM drive. That's not screwed in at this end. It might be screwed in at the other end. Is there any screws holding it in? Hmm. 
see any screws holding it in, but something's holding it in. Okay, nothing's holding it in. It's just a bit stiff. So I'll get that out of the way. If anybody wants these parts, make me an offer and I'll see what I can do. The motherboard on this computer is fried, I'm afraid. Um, it does work, but the sound doesn't. That's about the only thing that doesn't work on it. Anyway, let's get that hard drive out. I'll put that over by the game um, video editing computer, because that's going to be the video editing computer's hard drive. And just unplug all these little bits and pieces. Unscrew the, this motherboard. Um, I can't find the other screw. There it is. I'm probably blocking that with my tremendous bulk here. I have had this motherboard out before, but now it's going to be out permanently. Like I said. If you want this motherboard, just make me an offer and I'll see what we can do. Right, let's get this back plate out. Alright, so the only thing that's in this now is the floppy drive and I'm going to keep that in there because even though I don't even use it, a computer just doesn't look complete without a floppy drive. trying to empty all the crud out of this thing now. I can still hear stuff rattling around in there. Okay, one clean case later. Now the next thing to do is to find out whether I need to move any of these standoffs so the motherboard will fit in there. So this is my method. I've got the motherboard on a piece of paper and I've drawn out how much space of the paper it takes and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark where each hole is then I'm going to put that in the case and see what standoffs I'm going and um, which standoffs I'm going to need to move so I've got one there I'll just drop my pen and I'll just drop my microphone I've got another one there so is that all the holes I think so I don't think I've missed any out I think there's one there, which I haven't marked, and one there. Okay, so let's see if we need to move any of these. Now I'm just going to put this the thing. Well, those two top ones definitely are in the right place. So it looks like those two here are good. Okay, but this one here is going to have to be moved. So, apart from that one standoff that was in there, Everything else is right where I need it. Unfortunately, there's no provision to move it to a, a different place, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Anyway, better put that back plate in now. Oh, my motherboard is definitely not going to fit properly. I was going to cut this open with scissors and then found there's an easy open thing right there. So I'll just stick that in and make sure it's the right way round. Of course I will be pretty vexed if, the, if I put this in upside down. Now, just before I put the motherboard in, I want to see about that cooler. So I'm just going to drop that on there, see which holes line up. Okay. Oh, actually, don't need to do that. It's actually labelled on the holes right there. It was a little bit of a tight squeeze, but it's board in. installed now. I'll go over to this side so I can see what I'm doing more easily. Try not to actually touch any of the uh, metal connections on the motherboard. I'm just going to 
slot this in here and see how well it goes in. Okay, I'm going to push it in a little bit so those screws line up. Okay. This is kind of difficult to do this. I'm going to need three hands for this. Okay, that's the motherboard in. Now I've just got to connect this little bit here. Well, there's a lot more work to do than that, but uh, you know what I mean. And it's slightly better labelled in the instruction manual which um, which of these pins is which, so I'm just going to have a look and see. Just realised I'm not even, I haven't got the microphone on. I don't know how well that was picking up, but still. Right, let's see what we got here. Front panel header. Okay, so let's do the bottom ones first. Hard drive light is those two right in the corner. So, HD LED. I'll make sure it's the right way around. I'm going to assume that the red wire is positive. Because on the, uh, on the power LED light um, wire, positive is, um, well, the coloured wire and the negative is the white wire. So I'm just going to put that in there. Hope my head's not getting in the way. Okay, next along, reset switch. It shouldn't matter which way around it goes, but just to be safe, I'm going to make sure that I've got it connected the right way around. So, okay, negative is the white, I believe. I'm just going to put that in there. Power LED, which is those, all right, these ones right on the end here. Okay, there's the positive, and there's the negative. So that just leaves one of these now, which is the power switch. And that goes, where does that go? Right here. So make sure I've got that the right way around. Actually, no, I haven't got that the right way around. It shouldn't actually, it shouldn't even matter if it's the wrong way around, but just, you know, just to be on the safe side. There we go. Now, I've got to set up the USBs. Okay. According to the manual, I can have two USBs from the same header, so... Um, I'm just going to say that again. Okay, so I'll plug the USBs in now. I'm going to use the uh, header from the other, com well, the bracket from the other computer. I can just plug those into one header. And that should provide both USBs. We put in next. I think putting in some drives would be a good idea. Okay, so I'm going to put in the hard drive. This is the SATA hard drive which will have to be formatted so I'll just put that in there now the optical drive I'll just go over to the other side and slot it in What should we do next? I'll put the graphic card in last when, I've made, when I can um, be certain everything is working. I think the power supply will go in now. It's a great big heavy thing. Okay, here we are. I can tell you this packaging at Gaming is not anti-static because I got a shock off that. Anyway, I uh, hope that didn't damage anything. Mind you, it is heavily shielded, so it should have survived. That will go in there, like that. Let me just screw that in so it doesn't fall out and destroy anything. Okay, time to install a brain. Look at those cops out there. There's always somebody under arrest in this place.
can we get this out without touching anything on it? in properly here's the first four gigabytes and this being a two slot thing it makes it much easier I don't have to worry about which memory cards to put in which slot if I can struggle with getting the CPU cooler on there and we'll um, connect everything up, fire this thing up and see if it comes to life. About to do the first power on test now. I'm so excited. I've decided to put the cooler up there and put it on these uh, bits of things so you know, air can flow in and go through the radiator. Got my monitor connected to the onboard VGA and everything is wired up. The only thing that I am concerned about is that there is no ATX 12 volts power supply on this power supply. So I'm just hoping that's gonna work without it. And I'm gonna switch the power on. Okay, now I'm gonna press the power button, see what, if anything happens. Okay, uh, nothing. The fan did spin for a little bit and then it stopped, so I might have pressed the connected the wrong buttons up. Well, it looks like I'm going to need to have that connected after all. I just had a look through the manual and it says that if, this, if that isn't connected, the computer will not start, which is pretty much what is going on here. Alright, a little bit of innovation there. I've spliced one of the leads that I'm not going to use from the power supply. And I've got an ATX from the other power supply that was in the in this computer before, and I've plugged that in there. So hopefully now, I've plugged all that in, it should work. I don't really want to have to splice the leads of the power supply. Anyway, let's plug in and turn on. Let's see what we get now. Ah, I think it's staying on. Can't see anything on the screen, but there's definitely, it's definitely showing signs of life. Oh, 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 oh. It's alive! Alright, now all I've got to do is uh, get Windows installed. And... Now, I really want to install Windows XP and Windows 7 on this, if I can, because Windows 7, I've, you know, I've grown accustomed to it now, and I like it, but I still need Windows XP for my old stuff, but I'm not exactly sure if this is going to work being all SATA, but we'll try if Windows XP does not install, I've got a few ideas of what might make it. So, so we'll just turn this off. I think that fan is catching on something because I can hear it as it's going round, but I can already feel a little bit of warmth from that radiator. So I know that is working, it's doing its job. Right, I'll just connect up the hard drive and we'll see if we can get Windows XP installed. OK, 
Okay, well I've connected up the hard drive and my previous install of Windows XP has loaded. Don't know why it wasn't booting from the disk. So that's kind of weird. Mouse does not appear to be working. Did you get any response from the keyboard? No, well it's either crashed or something that's going on. So, I will just try to see what's going on here and uh, I'll be back. Okay, in the BIOS now. And everything looks okay. 3.6 gigahertz CPU. 29 degrees centigrade, that's not too shabby. So I want to keep monitoring that and make sure that stays nice and cool like that. Um, what I want to do is find out, get the boot settings done. Right, boot option. I'll be right back. Ah, look at these specs. Oh, another good news, the keyboard and mouse seem to be working again. But everything is just as I expected it to be. See? Intel Core i5, 3.3 gigahertz. Um, what else was I going to say? 3.4 gigs of RAM, but you can expect that because this is only 32-bit Windows, so it's not going to detect the full 8 gigs of RAM. Anyway, got to record over this installation of Windows XP and put my own one on there that I want. Hopefully, the, um, the CD drive should work now. So I hadn't plugged that in all the way. Come on. Well, Windows XP is installing right now. Anyway, this video is getting rather long, so I'm going to stop for now, and I will come back in a new video with um, more on this stuff. We'll test out Windows XP when it's installed, and then we'll try to install Windows 7. So I've got both operating systems. Then get all the drivers and everything installed. And I've kind of lost my train of thought now, so I'll just go. So until next time, goodbye.